time to rank all of the palettes that I tried in the month of November. In total, I ended up trying 10 eyeshadow palettes and I've ranked them from worst to best. It was an interesting mix, not really too many new releases, but I was able to tap into some newer palettes to me, though they might not have been newer to the market. So let's start off with number 10, the worst palette that I tried this month. And it's a mixture of because I'm disappointed in it and the color story and the quality, but I expected to love this palette much more. So I'm actually kind of disappointed by it. So that's gonna be the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Divine Neutrals palette. I placed a huge order on Ulta months ago not months ago weeks ago and I did a whole haul I wanted to try out a bunch of different brands eyeshadows and let me preface this by saying I say this every time I am a bit of an eyeshadow snob. I just think that the drugstore and affordable market tends to lack in quality and I can truly tell the difference between higher quality eyeshadows and lower quality. I don't care the price point. If it's good, it's good. But I just noticed typically you get what you pay for when it comes to eyeshadows. Eyeshadows isn't something that I compromise on because it's my favorite part of my makeup routine. And normally I actually quite like Morphe shadows. I think they are great for the value, but I was just disappointed in this palette all around and I actually think this is one of my most used palettes this month because I went to visit my family for a week in Thanksgiving and this is the palette that I brought with me and it is this 12 pan eyeshadow palette here and I thought I would love it. I love how it's just brown. I'm boring at heart. I love a boring palette. I love that it's brown mattes, brown shimmers, but overall I didn't like the colors of this because I felt like the shimmers here were just too dark. Every single day I felt like I ended up with like a neutral smoky eye and that's not really what I wanted. If I wanted a bright eye awakening eye, I would have to use this shade. The others are quite deep. And honestly, I found that it took me a long time to blend my eyeshadow and get the look to where I wanted it to be because of the quality. A good quality eyeshadow palette, you can get a look liquidy split, it blends itself. This one I had to put in a lot of elbow grease and work and time and rebuilding, reapplying to get a look that I was happy with. That being said, did I get looks that I enjoyed over the week that I used this? Yes, I got a really pretty smoky neutral eye for Thanksgiving. I saw some friends and family and I was happy to be wearing this, but it took me a while to get there. So for some reason, the application of this just wasn't top notch and I didn't really care for the colors. It wasn't really what I was looking for. I just thought it was too deep for my preferences. So I'm actually quite disappointed in this. I think I'd be able to justify this better if I liked the colors better and I thought for sure I was going to but these just look really really deep on the eyes and that's not always the look that I'm going for. I know it's hard to believe me based on what I have on my eyes <laughs> right now but for every day when I'm on vacation I don't want to commit myself to a dark eye so yeah I, I was disappointed in this one. Number nine Actually, every single palette up from here is pretty good. This is the J Cat Beauty Dia y Noche palette, but this is actually the Dia palette. I did a full face of drugstore makeup. I used this palette and I loved the look that I got. I was actually quite impressed with this palette, but again, I do believe you get what you pay for. I was absolutely able to make this work. I was able to get a pretty look with it, but I felt like, you know, the mattes were a little weak. The shimmers applied much prettier than they swatched, so I was pleasantly surprised by that. But overall, I mean, this eyeshadow palette full price is $8. If you can get it on sale, which Ulta has been putting these on sale, I picked this palette up for $4. And for $4, I think it performed really, really nicely. Does it stand up against my more pricey palettes that I know are going to have good quality? No, not a chance. But if you need to put an eye look together in a pinch, you can get... A look with this that looks like it was done with high quality eyeshadows. It might take a little extra time, a little bit of extra packing on, but I am very pleasantly surprised. This is a palette that I would describe as, you know, if I traveled or I was without an eyeshadow palette and I needed one and I just wanted to pick something up that I wouldn't need to spend a lot of money that would get the job done. This one I am very, very happy with, honestly. Is it a palette that I'm going to reach for over? my favorite palettes that I've spent a lot more money on. No, the quality does not compare, but 
still pleasantly surprised for four dollars and the look that i got with this one was super duper nice so if you get it for four dollars i mean that's a good value number eight quality is great just not in love with it it's a little underwhelming but it's good this is from natasha denona but it's the baby retro palette this came in the sephora bestseller must-haves kit that i talked about endlessly and so i think you can only pick this up really with that kit it's three shades from the retro palette in here so i already had these the quality of this is good this is really great and compact i would bring this with me for like a weekend trip nothing too long because i like variety here i typically use more than three eyeshadows but you do get a pretty look with it it's a little bit more pinky red i don't really love the colors that were chosen here it perfectly describes kind of the retro vibe here with what they were going for you can get a complete look there's nothing bad i can say about it i, I just i'm not really going to be reaching for this honestly it's not my all-time favorite colors it's very tiny though but i have trios from natasha denona that i like better listen this had to go somewhere this one doesn't excite me so yeah yeah okay so moving on to number seven i do feel a bit guilty about placing this where it is but hear me out it still is a beautiful palette this is what i picked up during the sephora vib sale event this is the dior backstage eye palette in cool neutrals and my story behind this is i used this years ago i actually reviewed it my mom purchased it and i didn't appreciate it back then i wasn't into those kind of colors and as time has gone by i've really grown in appreciation for mauvey shades and purpley shades and so now in 2022 i feel like this is more trendy now it's almost more popular than it is now than when you know you know what i'm saying than when it first came out so i saw this in sephora in stores and i was like this palette is stunning it's been given a new life just with the shifts of makeup as well as just me getting older in general so i picked it up it's gorgeous. I love the way it looks. I love the looks that I can get with it. But I will say, the newer palettes that have come out in the last four years from Dior, I feel like for these backstage palettes have been a little bit better quality. I think they've improved the quality since four years ago. And there's just, you know, some of the shades are not as creamy. Some of the shades are not as pigmented. But that being said, I think it's still a very nice eyeshadow palette and I love the looks that I can get with this. What makes this palette stand out is these tones of colors. A lot of brands just aren't creating palettes that have this color story so I still think it's a very nice palette I think it's quite unique I wish you could get more depth with it and it's not as good quality as I know Dior can do which is why I'm ranking this on the lower end but it still is a very pretty palette and I've loved my makeup looks that I've done with it so number six is a very affordable eyeshadow palette I'm excited to be sharing it with you this is by LA Girl this is a palette that has always caught my eye at the drugstore because I'm boring. It is what it is. This is the Keep It Playful eye palette in the shade Downplay. So if you like neutral tones, turn your ears on, listen up about this. I find this palette to be very high quality and comparable quality to higher end and more pricey eyeshadows with the exception of these two. So these two shades down here I find to be really messy. They look very thick on the eyelids, especially if you have mature lids. It's just gonna kind of emphasize fine lines and make the eyelid look very unsmooth. So for these two shades, I just didn't find them to be flattering. They were harder to work with. They were messy and not in love with these, which is a shame because they swatched rich, delicious, metally yummy on the arm and I was excited, but then it just didn't quite translate on the eyelids. So I'm taking these two out of the equation. I can let it pass because for the price point of this eye palette, the rest of the shades, you could fool me and tell me that this was a $40 eyeshadow palette. These shimmers right here, they've got it down. They might as well have just made these two this formula because... It really is like a higher quality shimmer shadow. The mattes, I think they could use a touch more pigment if I'm being picky here, but I will pack it on if I need to because they blend out beautifully and they perform so nice. So this is definitely one of the better drugstore palettes that you can purchase. I'm much more enthusiastic about it than some other palettes that I've tried from the drugstore. So I'm really excited. I actually ended up putting this in my November favorites because I wanted to share with you guys that it really is a good one. All right, so I'm sure you've stared at my eye look right now which I normally don't step out too much with this eye makeup 
and I had to go down to my lobby and I was like, oh my gosh, people are gonna think I'm crazy with my casual outfit, but I love this look. I think it is so fun and for the number five palette for today's video, it is the Gourmand Girls Spooked Palette. So this is an indie brand. I'm always excited to talk about indie brands and I think this palette is so fun. They worked with Doodles by The Bunny to curate this palette and it is so good. So obviously you can see it's a Halloween palette. I used this to be fair early November. That's when I first opened this up. But next year when Halloween comes around, this is definitely a top notch Halloween palette to have. So let's talk quality here. I am very, very impressed. I felt like the first look that I did with this was more in the warm tones and maybe the mattes could have been amped up a little bit. But today with the colors that I was playing with, which were on the outer part over here, I found that they carried a lot of pigment and were very easy to work with. So I was pleasantly surprised today. I think the shimmers that they have in here are really stunning. And one thing that I think Doodles by the Bunny does very well is she curates these color stories that not only go with the theme extremely well, but they also just makes sense in terms of actually creating looks. They offer a lot of variety in the looks that you can create. So the way that she, she's just so good at what she does, right? This palette screams Halloween. The actual Gourmand Girls formula I think is very, very nice. Uh, the shimmers can be a little messy, so be careful, but they pack in a lot of pigment and they look very special on the eyelids. So if you're bored of these traditional mainstream companies, definitely look into indie brands. This is the first Gourmand Girl palette that I've ever tried and I'm very happy with it. I mean, it's not at the top top for me because honestly, I'm just not gonna reach for these colors very often. This is what I would say is probably a colorful palette for me, but the times that I've used it, I've really enjoyed it. So let me tell you how I got today's look because it is quite special. So I started off with the shade Ghoul right here, which is a matte white. Love that there's a matte white in here. It allows you to kind of mix in with the matte shades to brighten the look, or you can just use it for an all over lid color or an inner corner highlight. I just applied this underneath the brow to brighten that up because I had a concealer that was a little dark and it also is going to help blend out the transition shades because the shades that I used were quite bold. So all over in the crease I used a little bit of terror which was red. I was very intimidated by this so I made sure I didn't pack it on too much. I just wanted the warmth to kind of peek through and it ended up going well with the purple so it looks almost a little bit more pink but I did blend this out to be kind of the crease transition shade. It can be pigmented if you want it to be, but if you want to use a light hand and get something more sheer, that was able to work well for me. And then you can see I created a halo eye. So I went in with this shade right here, this dark matte purple, and I blended that into the inner and outer corner, being very careful because if you put it in the wrong spot, you can totally look bruised. But again, great pigment, blended out very nicely. Then to deepen, we went in with Fright right here, which is a little darker. Again, kept it a little bit lower, but I did put it in the inner and outer corner of the eye. And then just to get a little bit of more smoke, a little bit more of a Halloween-y vibe, since this is the palette that we were using, I went in with Spook, which is the black. It's not too black, which I really like for the purpose of what I was using it today. Just a bit blended into the inner and outer corner to get it a bit more smoky, a bit more amped up. I went in with Treat, which is a shimmery purple, which is a little messy, so be careful, but it still adhered to the lid very easily and had a lot of pigment and base to it, so I applied that a little bit over the matte colors on the inner and outter part of the lid. Okay, yeah, I, I'm struggling to speak. <laughs> the inner and outer part of the lid leaving the center bare. But I thought that this shade, I was impressed. I was worried it would be Fallout City, but it did adhere to the lid nicely. And then I finished off with Bloody, which is this very shimmery, gorgeous, dimensional pink. And obviously that went to the center of the eye. This one has some like chunkier glimmers in here. Not like a true, really thick, chunky glitter, but it has more impactful sparkles in here. I think it looks really pretty. And overall, I mean, the look was really easy to do. These can be difficult colors to formulate and work with, but I think this brand did a great job. So I've been liking this palette. I think it's very, very fun for those of you who are daring. All right, let's move into number four. I have this baby quad from Viseart. Viseart came out with like eight palettes. I did do a whole swatch and sip on all of the palettes, but I've only been focusing on two. The first one is the Petit Fours Lila's palette. So this is a cute little quad. I think it's a great 
kind of more affordable way to try Viseart. So this is really pretty if you just want a simple, completely thoughtless, purpley, cool-toned, grayish type of eye. Very high quality with all of the launches that Viseart came out with in the last couple of months. Very high, consistent quality. I'm very happy about that. So this one isn't complete to me. I mean, it can be, but it does leave me wanting a little bit more of deeper shades. So I do feel the need to kind of grab into other palettes with this. I mean, thinking about it, the Gourmand Girls is probably better than this. So in a re-ranking, this one would have gone behind the Spooked palette, but it's here, whatever. It's still a really, really gorgeous palette and it's very high quality. If this is a color story that you think you'd be into, I do recommend it, but it does leave me wanting to dip into other palettes just to get a little bit more depth because that's how I prefer my makeup. Number three is the other Viseart palette. This one is fun because I feel like Viseart doesn't come out with these color stories. So this is the Petit Fours Violetta palette. And this one is quite fun for Miss Viseart. I mean, it, it's still like, it's not like blues and greens and vibrant or anything, but you can get a rich, delicious, smoky eye. They even popped in a duochrome here. And of course you get Viseart's beautiful quality. You know, Viseart is one of my all time favorite brands when it comes to reliable formulations, very easy to work with, very customized. That's why they are a pro artist favorite. I am just a little biased in these rankings because to me, Viseart, when they do it good, it's just one of my all-time favorite formulas. And I think that this color story is so fun. You have to want a deep, dark, plum, smoky eye. But I know if that's a look that I'm going for, that this is the quad that I can grab for. So I'm very excited about this. And it also pairs really well with the Lila Stew palette because these two together. Mm. All right, moving on to number two. This is the Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. Yes, I feel like this launched a lot longer ago. I've been looking at the photos of it for so long. I feel like this has been out for six months, but really, in reality, only a month. I really like this palette. Now, okay, I've said this in a lot of videos recently because this palette has been in a lot of videos. It's not my favorite Natasha Denona palette, but I've had a lot of fun with it, and it still was a highly anticipated release for myself. I love the packaging. I think it is so cool and the quality here, typical, great Natasha Denona quality, right? And I was actually very excited about this color story. Now, when it came into like my own hands and I actually started playing around with it, this just isn't a palette that I'm going to reach for over some of my other favorite Natasha Denona palettes. This is not a top tier Natasha Denona palette. However, I've had a lot of fun with it. It has made me step outside of my comfort zone. I don't necessarily think all of the colors work together. I just feel like there's something missing. I just don't know what it is. It's not a perfect palette for me. It's not one that I want to reach for all the time. If I want to do something unique, I will reach for this. Uh, if I want a minty kind of teal greenish eye, this one can be very fun. I've gotten very pretty looks with this palette. I would like more depth from it. I'm not completely satisfied with this, but it's Natasha Denona. I have a bias here. You guys know that. The quality is really great, and she has encouraged me to step outside of my comfort zone with this palette, which I personally think is something that is important with these rankings. Like, am I inspired by this palette? Does it get my creative juices flowing? And it certainly does. So it's ranking in at number two. And the best palette that I've tried, this is my personal favorite. I definitely recommend it. If you have not used your Sephora 20% off code yet, this might be a good one if you like neutrals. This palette isn't gonna be for everybody, but this is the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette. It's a downright boring palette. If you're looking to save money, you have a number of palettes in your collection, and they're neutral, you don't need this palette. It's it's not unique. <laughs> I'm not gonna say you don't already have these colors. It's a brown neutral palette, but overall, I think the quality in here is super duper nice. I really like these shimmer shades. Again, nothing unique, but I still think they are quite special. And overall, it's just an easy palette to slap a neutral look all over your face. It's good for daytime, it's good for evening. It looks sophisticated, you can get it to look smoky, you can get it to look supernatural. It's a very well curated neutral palette. 
Again, I I keep saying this, but I could use a little bit more depth. Like I think we need a little bit of a darker brown. A couple of the mid-tone shades I think are a little redundant in here. But overall, I've been wanting to reach for this palette because I'm quite comfortable with the color story. I know that it's not gonna take me long to create a look because it is high quality. I think it's weird that he came out with such an expensive palette because his last palettes weren't as expensive but I did notice an improvement in the formula. So if you still have that 20% off code, this might be a good one because I do think $68 is a bit much for what it is, but I I can't deny that he didn't do a great job with it. Like he did do a great job with it. And there we have it, you guys. Those are all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month of November, ranked from worst to best. I'm getting nervous here because you know what's coming up? My ultimate big every single palette that I tried in, in the year video, so. <laughs> should be fun keep an eye out for that but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful make sure you like and subscribe to my channel because we are in the middle of vlogmas so there's a lot more content coming every single day and i'll catch you guys in the next one i guess have a good one